They were saved back then by faith, looking forward to the cross. Now we're saved by faith, looking back to the cross. Everyone's saved by faith in the cross. They did it through the medium of sacrificing lambs, faith in the coming Lamb of God. We do it looking back in faith that the Lamb came. But everyone saved is saved by grace. Amen? So can we be saved while we deliberately disobey? After God saved the children of Israel, saved them, then he gave them the law. Those who continued to rebel, did they ever make it to the promised land? No. That's the story of salvation, friends. That's how it works. We're saved by grace. Then if we love him, if we trust him, we'll obey him. We'll make it to the promised land. But if we lose faith along the way, we're in a heap of trouble. And again, in Romans chapter 2, verse 13, some people believe that Paul teaches that we're under grace. We don't need to keep the law. These are the words of Paul. For not the hearers of the law are just in the sight of God, but the doers of the law will be justified. If that's clear, say amen. Amen. People try and twist what Paul says and make him say that, oh, we don't really need to obey because we're under grace. The law is not a bunch of don'ts. It's really a bunch of do's. Matter of fact, right in the law of God, in the commandment regarding idolatry, it ends by saying, showing mercy unto thousands of them that, catch this, Love me and keep my commandments. Love me and keep my commandments. Moses over and over said, love me and keep my commandments. So many people are angry about the law because they're trying to keep it and they don't love God. If we love God better, we'd obey him better. That's just the fact, friends. And so what if you're struggling with the law? Get to know the Lord better because if you know him, you'll love him. Amen? And again, Romans chapter 6, 15, similar verse. What then shall we sin because we're not under the law but under grace? God forbid. You know, I always like to illustrate this with a quick story. I've been pulled over once or twice for driving too fast. I could probably teach traffic school. I'm so thankful now you can do it online. One day I was driving in this, uh, down the highway, and I was deep in thought, very deep in thought, because I actually passed a highway patrolman. He wasn't parked. I went into the passing lane and passed him. And he pulled me over, and uh, he was very nice. And he said, you know, you weren't going that fast. You were speeding. He says, but I pulled you over because I was following someone, and you passed me. And I said, officer, I'm sorry. I was on another road. The speed limit was 70, and I came on this road, and I was deep in thought. Will you please have mercy? That's what I asked. Try that sometimes. It works. (laughs) And, uh, And so... He pulls me over, and now I'm under the law. Why? Because I broke it. I was under liberty until I started speeding. After he said, all right, I'm going to let you go, he may have written me up a warning. He may have just said, I'll let you go. I don't remember. It happened so many times. Um, <laughs> how did I pull out when I left? He was still in the back on his radio. I said, hey, praise the Lord. As soon as he said, you're, you're free, I'm not under the law, I'm under grace. So you know what I did? I revved my engine. I put it in second gear. I popped my clutch. I took off fishtailing, spraying gravel all over the police hood. Is that what I did? No. And I, I didn't drive off saying, praise the Lord, I can speed now, I'm under grace. This is the philosophy some churches have. They think Jesus died to buy us a license to sin. Just confess it every now and then to the priest. you got a free record to fill up with sin. No, I put my blinker on. I look both ways. (laughs) I took a hanky out and cleaned off the rearview mirror (laughs) so I could see the next policeman. (laughs) And I slowly, I waited until there was no traffic 500 yards in any direction, (laughs) right? And I pulled out and I went 52 and a half miles an hour. Why? Because I'm under grace. I was more careful than ever because he had mercy on me. I did not want to insult his mercy. And those who think we can continue in sin after Jesus died to save us from our sin, it is an insult. They're counting the blood of Christ as an unclean thing. God wants us to keep the Ten Commandments. Are God's law and Moses' law the same? Now, there's a distinction that's made in the Bible. Notice this. In Deuteronomy 4.13... Moses' last sermon before he dies, he's reciting when they got the Ten Commandments. So he declared to you his covenant, which he commanded you to perform, even the Ten Commandments, and he wrote them on two tables of stone. Notice it goes on and it says, and the Lord commanded me at that time to teach you statutes and judgments. 
Do you see a distinction here between the Ten Commandment law and the law of Moses? Notice the difference. Ten Commandment law written by who? God. Ceremonial law written by? Ten Commandment law written by the finger of God. Ceremonial law written by the hand of Moses. Ten Commandment law spoken by God's voice audibly. Ceremonial law spoken by Moses. Ten Commandment law put in the ark. Ceremonial law outside the ark. Did God make a distinction? Amen. We should make a distinction, not lump it all together. So what is the difference between the old and the new covenants? Very important to understand this. He declared unto you his covenant that he commanded you to perform even the Ten Commandments, and he wrote them on two tables of stone. The Ten Commandments were the covenant that God made. When the people, when Moses came down the mountain, people heard the law of God, they said, all the Lord has said, we will do. But after Moses came down the mountain, were they doing it? Or had they forgotten already? They made a golden calf and they probably broke all Ten Commandments. There was a fault with that. That's why the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 8, verse 8, for finding fault with them. Does it say finding fault with the law or with them? Those who made the covenant had a fault. Nothing wrong with the law. So then he makes a new covenant. Hebrews 8, verse 8, I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah, the Lord says. And again, you can read it in Jeremiah. Well, by the way, you find the new covenant in the Old Testament. Jeremiah 31, 33, but this is a covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, saith the Lord. I will put my laws in their minds and write them on their hearts. So you tell me, the Old Covenant, was the law part of the Old Covenant? Yes. The people said, all the Lord has said, we will do. It was their promise, a bad promise. New Covenant, God says, is based on better promises. God says, I will write it in their hearts. It's based on his promise. Old Covenant, written on stone. New Covenant, written where? Is it a different law or the same law? Same law, just written in a different place. Nothing wrong with the law. It's just and holy and good. For this is the covenant that I will make, saith the Lord. I will put my law in their minds and write them in their hearts. This is what it means to be filled with the Spirit of God. You know, every time we think that sin doesn't matter, we're advertising for the devil. We're embracing the torture of Jesus. It hurts the Lord. God would never ask you to do something without giving you the power to do it. Amen, friends? Inherent in all the commands of God are the power to obey. Would you like to ask for the power of the blood tonight to wash you from your sin, to be a doer of the word? Father in heaven, we believe we have heard the truth from your two witnesses tonight, the law and the prophets, that your word does not change, that it is written in stone. Tonight we would also like to ask that thy law of love be written in our hearts. Help us to embrace the new covenant. Be with all these people who are watching. I know that they're struggling in their life.